Uh, our lecture today is given by uh, uh, Ray Finch. Uh, Ray is, uh, first of all, uh, a, uh, an alum of our Reese program. He has his master's in uh, Russian, East European, and Eurasian studies, uh, but he's also a uh, uh, senior analyst over at the Foreign Military Studies Office in Fort Leavenworth. And uh, we often have him lecturing here on some aspect, some contemporary aspect of what's going on uh, in Russia. So I'm very happy to have him here to talk to a little bit to us uh, about patriotism in Russia. Great. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words, a few words about certain aspects of Russian patriotism today. Uh, before I begin, a couple caveats. Uh, first, while I spend a lot of time looking at Russian security matters, I don't consider myself an expert in this area. So if you have objections, please feel free to voice them. I'd only ask that you wait until the QA so I can get through my remarks. Second, this is much too big of a topic to fit into the 30-minute bag, so I've had to rely upon some broad generalizations. Hopefully, we can sift out some of the details during the QA. The image on the slide depicts an image. The image on the slide depicts a Soviet soldier preparing to throw a hand grenade at an approaching Nazi tank. In 2013, a Russian movie director began production of a film which captures the exploits of the 28 Panfilovsev and the role they played in stopping the Nazi advance toward Moscow in November 1941. My comments this afternoon will briefly describe the history, some would say the legend, of this exploit, a few of the interesting aspects surrounding the creation of the film, and a sample of the debate surrounding this topic. I will conclude with a handful of possible implications, especially as they relate to the question of Russian patriotism today. For the non-historians here, let's do a quick review of the events leading up to the events of 75 years ago on the outskirts of Moscow. In the early morning hours of 20, Sunday, 22, 22 June 1941, Hitler unleashed Operation Barbarossa, where some 4 million Axis soldiers along an 1,800-mile front invaded the Soviet Union. At first, the Nazis made great gains, but were ultimately stopped near Moscow in November, December 1941 when the USSR counterattacked. While the war would drag on for nearly four more years, stopping the Nazis on the outskirts of Moscow was a key turning point of the war. The events near Moscow in November, December 41 have been thoroughly examined by historians, even before the end of the war. One particular exploit that was enshrined in Soviet and later Russian history dealt with the achievements of the 316th Rifle Division, which was under the command of General Ivan Panfilov. You can see a picture of him there. According to later testimony or news reports, on 16 November 1941, a group of some 28 soldiers from one of the frontline regiments in Panfilov's division single-handedly managed to destroy 18 German tanks which were advancing toward Moscow while fighting to the last man. Their exploit put a human face on Soviet sacrifice and determination and became part of the established lore surrounding the Soviet victory in the Great Patriotic War. Generations of young Soviet and later Russian schoolchildren were taught to revere the sacrifice and the great heroism of those who became known as the 28 Panfilovsev. Besides history books, their feat of heroism around Moscow in late 41 has been memorialized in art, literature, and monuments. The feat of the 28 Panfilovsev has entered in the realm of Russian consciousness akin to something like immortal truth the story became a staple in educating children about the Great Patriotic War. Here's an example of a PowerPoint slide I borrowed from a Russian grade school in Novosibirsk earlier this month, where the topic dealt with the battle for Moscow. Up at the top, you see the famous quote attributed to the political commissar of the unit. I'll just let you read that. Here, and here are a couple photos of students and military cadets showing their respect for these heroes. The banner reads, We are a million Panfilovsev suggesting that they too are prepared to sacrifice their lives for the motherland. Here are a couple of examples of propaganda, artwork, and literature which celebrated this feat. There are literally thousands available. Here's a photo of the memorial built near the village of Dubosekova, where the exploit took place, and it's located about 50 miles uh, west of Moscow, and it's dedicated to the feat of the 28th Panfilovsev. Uh, here's a couple of photos from a more humble memorial in Almaty in Kazakhstan. Again, General Panfilov's division was assembled in Central Asia in 4041 and contained a number of Kazakh and Kyrgyz soldiers. So you get the point. The feats of the 28 Panfilovsev have been celebrated in every sort of venue, except 
a movie solely dedicated to describing their heroic exploit. And this is where we get to Andrei Shelyopa, a 34-year-old Russian movie producer and screenwriter. In late 2008, uh, Shelyopa began writing the screenplay for his proposed movie titled 28 Panfilovsev. By 2011, he had pretty much completed the screenplay and began to look for investors to fund this film. One might think that such a popular topic would attract both government and private backing, but according to Shalyopa, he found little support among the usual suspects. <clears throat> By mid-2013, Shalyopa decided to try using crowdfunding to support the production of his movie, and the response was overwhelming. In a matter of months, he had collected millions of rubles. Shalyopa and his team harnessed all sorts of social media to increase buzz and support for the movie. They created a series of movie trailers or teasers which highlighted the film's development. Contributing to the film's production was a way for a Russian to express his or her patriotism in a concrete way. <clears throat> As word got around, others helped to support the movie's production. Here you can see a flyer for a mo folk music concert where some of the proceeds from ticket sales would go toward the movie. Shalyopa's team developed a very professional website where visitors could follow the latest developments and support this project. Just about the time events in Ukraine began to heat up, there was increased discussion on the internet as to why the Russian government was not supporting such a patriotic endeavor. As interest in the film grew and widened, so apparently did expenses. Uh, where Shalyopa had initially suggested that the film would be, could be made for about $500,000, he was soon asking for much more. Some of these increased costs stemmed from greater concern for the overall quality of the film. Such a hallowed topic could not be filmed in a slipshod or sloppy manner. <clears throat> not surprisingly, given the tenor of the time, in December 2014, the Russian Minister of Culture, Vladimir Medinsky, agreed to match the funds that had been collected by crowdfunding which was about more than 30 million rubles. At the time, it was about a million dollars, soon to be about half a million. Um, the Kazakh and Kyrgyz ministries of culture contributed about another 20 million, million rubles. Here you can see a picture of the Kazakh president, Nazarbayev, who visited the uh, memorial back in 2005. <clears throat> but most important of all was the contribution of the, of the computer game manufacturer, Ginjin Entertainment, which added another 70 million rubles, about equal what had been collected so far. They also helped out with much of the graphic design and special effects for the film. Actual filming began in October 2013 at Len Film Studios in St. Petersburg. Progress was slow. Even with the extra money, final production of the film continued to be delayed. On three to four different occasions, Shalyopa announced that the film would be completed by such and such a date, only to have the deadline move back again. Some of those who had contributed money even began to question if this wasn't an elaborate scam to defraud contributors. You can see a fragment from a web, co web conversation reflecting this concern. And there was a lot more. <clears throat> But a much bigger problem for Shalyopa and his team was the renewed historical argument as to whether the exploits of the 28 Panfilovsev ever really occurred. We don't have time to go into all the details, but the outline of the debate goes something like this. In late November 1941, a reporter for Krasnaya Zvezda, military newspaper, was at the front outside of Moscow and reported a story where a group of some 30 soldiers in General Panfilov's division heroically stopped a Nazi tank advance by literally fighting and dying to the last man. The story was embellished a bit the next day by a Krasnaya Zvezda editor, and you can see the headline of the original story here. <clears throat> the story was further elaborated upon in a January 42 Krasnaya Zvezda article, where the names of those who supposedly died were added, and the famous phrase of the unit's political officer were recounted. You can see it there. Velika Rasi. Uh, no, place to, no place to retreat because Moscow is behind us. The story was great propaganda and a powerful motivator throughout the remainder of the war and afterwards. <clears throat> After the war ended, however, it came out that not all those listed as the 28 Panfilovsev were actually dead. So the military conducted an investigation to sort things out. Bottom line, many of the specifics in the story did not occur. 
They were mostly made up by the Krasnaya Zvezda reporter and editor. However, this being Stalin's Soviet Union, the report was classified secret and appropriately filed. In the 1965 Soviet official history of World War II, it claimed that the 28th Panfilovsev had indeed knocked out 18 tanks and killed 70 enemy soldiers. <clears throat> While articles and rumors continued to circulate around the veracity of the story, it wasn't until mid-2011, just about the time Shelyopa was looking for support or investors for his film, that an article appeared in Komsomolskaya Pravda with the title, Secrets of the State Archives, How They Invented the Panfilovsev Feat and Collapse of the USSR. In this article, the director of the Russian archives, Sergei Mironenko, referred to the 48 secret investigation, which is described how many of the details in the story were made up. You can still read this story at the Komsomolskaya Pravda site, and the reader comments. The article received considerable attention, much of it unfavorable. Many of the reader comments reflected the opinions later expressed by the Soviet Union's last defense minister, and you can see him there, General Dmitry Yazov. Yazov wrote a rebuttal to the comments made by Miranenko, and you can get the gist of his argument from the article's title. The exploits of the 28 Panfilovsev are alive and well. I want to read just a couple of quotes from Yazov's article. This is Yazov writing. For one who has never smelled gunpowder, how dare this historian Mirnenko call this exploit a myth? And here's another. I purposely put the word historian in quotes when referring to Mr. Mirnenko because I believe that a man who hates the past of their homeland, and judging by this publication in Komsomolskaya Pravda, this is true. He hardly has the right to call himself a historian. <clears throat> While the battle of the historians was heating up, Shalyopa was concentrating on getting his movie produced. At first, he regarded this debate as a distraction, but he soon began to voice a more critical view toward those who dared to question the traditional story. Some of his criticism might have been due to concerns expressed on social media that this movie was not a worthwhile project. Here you can see an announcement for a talk on this topic questioning why would you contribute money to a movie based on questionable facts? <clears throat> the debate heated up again when, in July 2015, Miranenko decided to publish on the Russian State Archive website the formally classified investigation from 1948. You can go there and read it. It's interesting. This did not sit well with Russia's Minister of Culture, Vladimir Medinsky, who pointed out that a state archivist had no right to offer one's personal views on the veracity of historical documents. He went on to suggest that Mirinenko might want to consider changing professions. While Mirinenko didn't immediately take the hint, he was removed from his position about eight months later. <clears throat> Not surprisingly, Shoyopa also denounced the State Archives publication of this memo as, quote, undermining the moral potential of the nation. He was quoted as saying, this is something that is part of our national self-awareness. These are these are simple examples that help us raise new generations. He went on to say, trying to debunk instances of national heroism can only be done to weaken the people's moral foundation. One can hardly think of a noble motive for that. <clears throat> Regardless, movie production continued while debate over the story's veracity raged on. The debate has yet to be resolved and doesn't look to be settled anytime soon. Here you can see President Putin visiting with Andrei Shoyopa at Len Film Studios in June 2016. Putin was there to measure progress on restoring the filmmaking facilities at Len Film, which had fallen into considerable, considerable disarray over the past two decades. So where are we today? Uh, the movie is scheduled to be released on 24 November 2016, which almost coincides exactly with the 75th anniversary of the port purported exploits of the 28th Panfilovsev. Just one other curious detail from Shalyopa's search to find a production outlet and distributor for the film. After considerable negotiations, Shalyopa and his team decided to go with an American company, Universal Pictures, to handle the marketing, production, and distribution of their film. When they signed the contract this past spring, some supporters raised their eyebrows as to why an American company was chosen. And one just interesting tangent to this film, in early July of this year, a Universal executive, Jeff Schell, was detained when he landed in Moscow, had his passport seized, and then was deported out of the country. At first, Mr. Schell said he didn't know why he was subject to such aggressive Russian behavior and said that he felt that he had been 
been mistaken for Jason Bourne. <laughs> the Russian side soon explained their move, saying that it, had, that it had nothing to do with Mr. Shell's work as a universal executive, but rather that he served as the chairman of the Broadcasting Board of Governors, a U.S. state agency responsible for American media outlets like Voice of America and Radio Free Europe. I tried to contact Mr. Shell to get his side of the comment. He wouldn't reveal any information. So <clears throat> what are some pop possible implications from this film making episode, particularly with regard to the topic of Russian patriotism today? First, the great patriotic war is alive and well in Russia today. The tremendous losses and their ultimate victory continue to play an integral role within Russian public consciousness. This was evident by the massive crowdfunding and heated debate over the production of this film. Second, the actual production of this film belies the notion that the Kremlin has created a huge media propaganda machine, at least with regard to film production. Initially, the Russian government did little to support this film. And had it not been for the devotion of people like Shelyopa and those who contributed to the crowdfunding, it likely never would have been made. And this might illustrate the organic nature of some of Russian patriotism today. <clears throat> Third, at a deeper level, the production of this movie ought to make us pause to consider how history is actually formed. Just as the Krasnaya Zvezda reporter made up details of how the German advance toward Moscow was stopped in the winter of 41, so today, the movie producer borrows those facts he found convenient to tell a story. Though I have no solid data, I would suspect that, quote, historical films continue to play a huge role in shaping historical consciousness. If nothing else, the production of this film illustrates how the lines between history, myth, and art are forever shifting, and that myths may be stronger than historical truth. And I'll also talk about virtual war and reality in a second. <clears throat> in one of the interviews he gave during the movie's production, Shalyopa was asked, why make yet another movie about World War II? He replied that while movies made during the Soviet period about World War II often recognized the heroism of Russian Soviet soldiers, the same was not necessarily true for the post-Soviet period. He went on to say that Russia today needed some unambiguous, positive military role models as, or heroes to look up to, and that the 28 Pantilovs have filled this niche. <clears throat> In this regard, I'm not going to delve too much into psychobabble. I feel compelled to mention the overall context in which this film was made. Actual production of the film largely took place against the backdrop of the ongoing violence in Ukraine and Russia's partial isolation from the West. As you are aware, the Kremlin has denied any sort of military involvement. So those Russians who have fought and were wounded or killed have done so with little or no recognition. Who knows, this movie vicariously may help. On still another level, the Kremlin-supported media have portrayed the events in Ukraine using a paradigm similar to that of their victory over Nazi Germany. In this narrative, Western fascist powers have invaded Ukraine, removing the legitimate pro-Russian leader in an illegal coup. The Kremlin has been aiding those pro-Russian regions which have rebelled against the new fascist government. And just as the 28 Panfilovsev were able to heroically stop the Nazi advance toward Moscow, so today, similar patriots in Donetsk and Luhansk, or what some refer, refer to as Novorossiya, are also fighting and suffering to defend against this Ukrainian fascist junta. And finally, though I might be stepping out on a limb here, the production support and warm reception of this film may indicate a change in the average Russian's perspective toward the subject of war. Alongside the rhetoric for greater military preparedness over the past few years, from my perspective, Russian society has become tempered to the likelihood of future conflict. Indeed, as the ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and Syria have illustrated, many Russians appear, appear to be increasingly mentally prepared for war. The old Soviet perspective of as long as there is no war, Lish Bui Nyet Vaini, has been replaced by a belief that war is now a viable and perhaps even an attractive option. One can only hope that the new movie, 28 Panfilovsev, helps to dispel this belief. I'd like to show you just a couple of um, 
clips here. One is the trailer for the movie, and a, the, the second is a brief interview with Shelly Oakley and some of his uh, comrades. Alexis, could you uh, turn the lights off right behind you? Thank you. Один, 
и приняли решение стать полноценным партнером, а теперь целым партнером. Да? Что, конечно, для нас ну, тоже может быть большое счастье. Во-первых, нам админ, это не, не изменилось, а во-вторых, всегда приятно иметь такого партнера. Конечно, хотелось бы помочь больше. И помощь им была нужна, потому что Калатфанин это, это рекордный кровный проект по Калатфанину в стране. Таких не было ни разу, никогда в нашей стране столько денег ни один проект не принимал. Показывает, как сильные люди стартовались по хорошему кино и хорошему кино войны. Мне им хотел сказать всем, всем людям, кто, кто хочет быть причастным, да, и всех, кто готов помогать. Каким образом это помнить не было бы а, Просто это перепост или это покупка пакета или все что угодно. Мне хочется сказать спасибо, потому что на самом деле все, что произошло на протяжении нашего пути, происходили невероятные вещи, которые в жизни, в общем-то, первый раз я с таким даже не сталкивался, немножко не бывает. Все это произошло благодаря активности народа. Вот поэтому э, вера наша в то, что проект наш успешный, она крепнет день ко дню, благодаря вот участию народа. Все делают все возможное, чтобы снять отличный фильм, бодрый фильм, и вот нет никого, кто спрашивает, а что мне за это будет? А какой мой личный интерес, который стабилизирует Или, а так, а зачем мне это нам надо? Мы будем делать то, что мы будем делать, свою работу. Окей. That concludes my presentation. There's a nice picture of the memorial there at Dubasekova. Look forward to your questions if you have any.